Welcome to episode 35 of For the Love of Guns. My name is Jason Chowler and I'm your host. And today I'm going to talk about dry fire. Now, dry fire can be boring, right? I mean, clicking away at a trigger, not shooting any ammo, not getting the recoil, it can get boring. And I acknowledge that. I mean, I work dry fire into my daily life to try to get the most out of my technique. But dry fire can get really kind of boring. Um, and it's no substitution for live fire. I totally admit that. And I don't think anybody else would argue that point. There is no substitution for live fire. But dry fire is a good way of getting practice. So that way when you do get to the range and you do start shooting, well, expensive ammunition, depending on when you're watching this, you know, ammunition can get kind of expensive. You get the most out of it. Now today I'm joined by Ben Kampmanis. He is the owner of LaserX, and it's a dry fire solution. So we're going to talk to Ben about dry fire and about LaserX. And Ben surprised me during the podcast. He dropped in a discount code. So you're going to have to listen to the end and you'll see us actually talk about the discount code and try to figure out what the discount code is in the podcast. So Listen all the way to the end to when we get that discount code and it's 10%. So definitely you want to check that out. And it's not just 10% on the software, it's 10% on everything in the store. So if you're looking to get a cert pistol, they sell those too. So definitely, definitely listen to the end and check it out. Now, before we talk to Ben, it's time to pay the bills. If you're watching the video side of the podcast, you can see the pegboard behind me. Or if you've seen most of my videos, you can see that pegboard. Most of those tools have been bought through Brownells. Some are even Brownells branded tools. Now, I really like Brownells. They've got just about anything a gunsmith would need or even a DIYer. But what's really great about it is most of the products that they sell have a forever guarantee to them. If that tool or product fails to perform, Brownells will stand behind it. It's an awesome deal. There are new companies coming out with new tools and Brownells is keeping an eye out for them. So definitely go check out Brownells if you'd like to see the work that I've completed with Brownells tools and products. Go to trb.fyi slash Brownells. That'll take you to the page of all the content that I've created with Brownells. And with that, let's talk to Ben. Ben, tell me about your love of guns. Sure. Uh, my name is Ben Kampmanis. Um, I am a co-owner of a company called Laser, uh, but you'll find us on the internet at laserapp.com. Um, but I guess if you're asking me what do I ident identify myself as, um, I'll just go through the gamut of things that when my feet touch the floor in the morning. I guess, uh, one, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. I'm a husband, a dad, a brother, a son, an American Marine veteran and a businessman, but most of all, I don't always nail those correctly, uh, but I'm glad those people are patient with me uh, because I don't always hit the mark every time. So hopefully you guys will be patient with me here too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, we talked at shot and that's when I found out you were a Marine. And I do want to thank you for your service because anybody that's willing to stand up, take that oath and defend the country is definitely worthy of at least a thanks. So Ben, thank you for your service. Well, I appreciate it. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, talking to other vets, when people do that, they'll stop us in the store. It feels like we're astronauts. Um, a lot of us feel uncomfortable, um, but I've learned to say, well, I appreciate your support because that's the biggest thing is my kid's in the Marine Corps right now. He's in the IT space um, and there's a lot of criticism going on, but the most important thing for the troops out there is the support. So, you know, Jason, I appreciate the support that you expressed that, there. Thank you. It, it's my pleasure because, you know, that's one of the things I grew up with is... You know, we were, I grew up with, you respect the uniform. You know, yeah. these are the people who, who took the oath. My great grandfather moved here from Germany um, and fought in World War I, fought against his family. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then when, when World War II rolled around, my, gra my grandfather, he joined the Navy. And uh, I remember hearing the story about this is that, you know, his parents, my great grandparents said, you know, you realize you're going to go fight against your cousins. And he goes, well, you know, they're trying to kill me too. Um, <laughs> so going forward, my father, uh, was in Navy Vietnam. 
Um, wow. My uncle was in the Navy Vietnam. And it, it's just, it's been a big military family. So we, we grew up with, you need to, res you need to respect that, you know, people who serve because they, that's, they're doing something that most people wouldn't do. I mean, they're putting their lives into harm's way. And um, I, I do, I, I, I just can't say enough, you know, more people need to say thank you to, to a vet for, for defending the freedoms that we have. Well, appreciate that. I mean, it's always good to hear that support. And like I said, the guys out there today, um, it, it's, a, it's a different world than when I was in. I was in during Desert Storm. But it means all. I'm sure it means a lot to those guys out there on the front lines right now. So, so Ben, now you have this thing called Laser App, and it's for dry fire practice. For those people in the audience who don't know what dry fire practice is, would you mind just giving a little quick, you know, what is dry fire? Sure. Um, I'll add a little caveat to it, but uh, the common definition you'll hear about dry fire, and I, I, I actually pulled it off the internet, it's dry fire is practicing or shooting without live ammunition. But I usually add in there with a goal or objective in mind that you want to improve. Because um, sure, you can take your firearm and just start clicking the trigger, racking it, clicking the trigger. I mean, kids, well, when we were kids, I'll say, we used to run around and play um, cops and robbers. We had guns. In a sense, that's kind of like dry fire because you're not firing live ammunition, but you're going through the motions of pulling the trigger, looking down your sights. But when you do dry fire in the Second Amendment community, you actually have an objective that you're trying to accomplish, maybe uh, correct an uh, issue with a technique or a skill. But I usually say it's everything you would do with a, a live gun, but you're not shooting ammunition with a goal or objective in mind. That's usually what I say about dry fire. See, and that's great that you put the whole goal and objective because, I mean, yeah, I can sit here and just rack a slide and click the thing, but that's not helping me out being a better shooter. I mean, this is, that's why we say it's practice, right? So that's that right. way we can become better. Um, now, there are some guns. I mean, I, I remember we talked at SHOT Show. Um, we talked a little bit about, there are some guns that you can't really dry fire with. I mean, mo mostly you refer back to the manufacturer, but in general, dry fire is safe for most modern firearms, correct? Yeah, I mean, the common, uh, I think the common thing is dry fire is something you should do with all your guns, with the exception of, and I don't know if some folks, uh, they come from different walks of life, things called rim fire. Those are typically, you'll see the 22 long rifle. That's where you look at the cartridge and the back of it. There's not a circle with a primer on it. It's basically a flat bottom and it has a rim on it. And the reason is when the hammer strikes that, it's actually hitting the edge or the rim of the cartridge. And if you do that with a rim fire gun, I believe you could say like a 22 LR. Uh, 25, uh, anything like that that doesn't have a primer in the center, you're going to damage your gun because, again, you're using the hammer and it's striking the edge of the rim. And the other caveat I would say is if you have a, uh, a nice military classic weapon that's kind of old, probably don't want to dry fire with those. But pretty much everything that's modern day, your SIGs, um, Glocks, Walthers, uh, Berettas, rim fire, uh, uh, center fire cartridges with the primer in the middle, you're pretty much safe to do that. And because that's really, if you think about it, most people are carrying those guns anyway. Either they're either right. carrying them or they own them for a personal defense. I'm not saying that people don't have 22s for personal defense. It's it's fine, um, but generally, most people, the gun they have, they're they're almost good to go as long as it's just not one of those rim fires. Correct. I mean, you're pretty much the nine mil, the 45, the common calibers you hear out there that people are carrying every day, or you'll see at the, the gun shows. Those are pretty much safe. And again, I always tell people, if you're unsure, you can Google it these days or call your manufacturer or even the, the store that you're buying the gun from. And they'll tell you that you should dry fire and they'll even tell you, hey, yeah, this is safe or not. They'll know that easily. Now, one of the things is I, I do a lot of dry fire, okay. right? So I mean, that's just my thing is I want to I want to try to become a better shooter and I can't always be at a range. Yeah. But one of the problems that I have is dry fire gets a little bored, right? I mean, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> shoot a target on the wall or rack my slide. I'm going to shoot that target on the wall again. Now you have um, the laser app, right? How does the labor laser app make this a little more, well, less boring? Well, I mean, you, you have a clear point because dry fire, I use a term when I, maybe I even use it with you. It's not sexy. It's basically yeah. take your, you can take your gun, nothing in there, make it sure it's safe. It's empty and you know, safe and clear. 
And you can paint, uh, you can aim at a paint chip on a wall, a light switch, practice your sight picture, sight alignment, and the trigger press, you're dry firing. That's really what it is. And in the Marine Corps, we did that when we first got our service rifles, and not everybody in the Marine Corps comes in there knowing how to shoot. We spent hours, we actually had something called Grass Week, where all we did was snap in or dry fire with our M16A2s on a barrel with a little silhouette of the target, and that was dry fire. It's not sexy. Um, sometimes it feels like it's punishment. But uh, the way laser ups, ups the practice is we put a little, we spice it up with a little technology. So everybody pretty much has an iPhone these days or an Android device that they would use, a tablet, a laptop. We actually allow you to use technology or incorporate technology to give you more feedback with your training when you're doing dry fire. So our system is really designed, um, I would say, to remove any of the obstacles where people say, well, I don't know what to train with. I don't have ammo. I don't have time. It's to remove all those obstacles and excuses to not train with your firearm because you know it too, Jason. It's uh, just a perishable skill. And if you don't yep. do it, uh, just like flossing or working out at the gym, you're going to lose uh, the, the the benefit that you had with it when you were first training. So that it's definitely something that uh, laser is trying to make more uh, appealing to others. And one thing I like to say, and you know, the two of us talked about this on the phone, you know, a while mm. back when we were trying to set this up. It's, I like to say with dry fire, it's it's really good for people who, let's just say, live in an area that it's politically charged sure. <laughs> with, with a firearm. You know, yeah. They may own a gun and they may not want people to know they own a gun. They don't want to see them going to a gun range and things like that. They can still get their practice in and they can do it at home in the privacy of their home and no one ever knows. I mean, it, it, the big thing about laser or any dry fire application that, uh, that you would find on the market is you can practice in the privacy of your own home. Um, we just make it so that you can use it on any on a device you probably have. I mean, like I said, almost everybody has one of these in their pocket and their faces are down in it. Um, the idea is to give you the ability to practice wherever you want, when you want, using as many targets and whatever you want to use as targets. Um, the biggest thing, you made a point that a lot of the uh, folks who might be buying guns today, what was I think 2020, when we look at the next checks, uh, it came to be almost 5 million new I firearms know. owners. And then 2021 is right on its heels, almost a 5 million again. And who knows what we're going to get in 2022 when we get out. A lot of those folks, when we look at the uh, analytics coming to our website, we see them coming from New York City, not New York State, but New York City, Chicago, LA, areas you typically see as they hate guns, but Looking at those metrics, it tells me it's not the case. They know they need guns. The challenge that you pointed out, though, is they don't know who to ask. They don't know necessarily where they can train. They might have to skirt the city of New York just to get to the training range or the shooting range uh, on the island or some other place. Um, but one thing is if they ask their friends who are, quote, unquote, anti-gun, they don't know if they actually have a firearm. They might get ostracized from their you know, community or for their group, so they don't dare open their mouth, so they don't know who to ask. And the worst thing they can do really is take that gun they just bought, buy a box of ammo, throw it in the drawer and think they're safe. Yep. They've actually become more unsafe than anything because they could harm their loved one that they think they're going to protect. And, you know, under stress, if you haven't practiced and someone's coming at you through your door, that's probably the worst time to learn how to use a firearm or do anything that requires, yep. you know, possibly taking a life. That's not something you want to deal with at that time. Well, that's the whole thing about stress is that when mm. you're under stress, you don't resort to your highest mastery of a, of a, of a subject. You resort to your lowest mastery of a subject. Correct. Um, I mean, you've got so many things going on. That's why you want to practice. Um, you want to keep going. I mean, that was my whole concern with the, you know, I'll we'll use it, the 5 million figure Yeah, is that, you know, it's, you know, so you go through 2020 and everything that's going on 2020 and 2021 ammo was hard to find. So people got their first gun and got their token box of ammo. And yeah. that was, that was it. Yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm now safe, you know, and I, and for those of you listening, I'm using air quotes around safe. Um, when I, I like what you say, they, they're really, they're really not, they, you know, they could be, they're more unsafe now than ever. Right. It's, it comes to that training. Um, we need to we need to make sure we're getting people out to train how how they're using their gun how they're you know how the controls work um, and that's why I like things like laser app because like you said before you're taking those barriers down um, you know ammo is expensive ammo is still expensive I was out 
uh, shooting yesterday. I was filming for um, uh, a, pro a a new product. It's a 30 round mag. And <laughs> you know, I'm sitting you... there. Well, when I, when I agreed to do this, I'm sitting there going, okay, cool. 30 round mag. It's a 30 round mag for a P320. I'm like, this is wow. awesome. <laughs> and then I got it in and I went, that's $12. <laughs> it's $12 <laughs> of ammo every time I shoot that mag. And I'm like, so I mean, it costs is a real thing. It is. Um, it is. And it, that's I mean, where dry fire kind of comes in. You can still it, practice. It is. And I mean, to, to your point, that 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 thirty round mag. What is that? Is maybe like a Big Mac meal uh, at McDonald's. I mean, yeah. you're walking around with a, 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 your dinner right there, walking around with it. Um, it's expensive, and that's just the cost of ammo. Think about it now when you have to pay range fee. So, I, I did a quick calculation. I ran some numbers here. Um, if range fee is let's say $20 an hour. And that's a you know, fairly decent range. Maybe you remember, so it's a little bit less, but you have to prepay it. And then now, at least for me, uh, getting to a range where I can actually do movement, not just shooting down a bay, where you're actually doing a tactical, uh, pr you know, practicing tactical movements, that's probably an hour out of my out of Dallas, Texas here. So now you're paying for gas and you're dealing with time. So there's a lot of barriers that people can say, look, I, I want to be safe. I really have good intentions, but I just can't get to it. And I think dry fire, especially with laser, gives you the ability to do that. It, it kind of takes, away, like you said, take, we, we said take away the barriers or excuses why you can't train. Yeah, because that's like, uh, you know, I'm, I, I know you, you're down there in Texas. I'm up here in Montana. Yeah. For me to get to the range like you, I, I can't stand it in a lane and just punch holes in paper. Um, yep. I, I did that as a kid. I'm an adult now. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to start doing, you know, the, the big boy stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've been competing for, well, since I was 21, I'm now 50. So you guys can do the math. Um, <laughs> I can't, I can't sit there and just do static shooting. So I, I need an outdoor range where I can move. I can draw from the holster and, and practice all that stuff. And that range, uh, if I, if I join the range, that's uh, about $40 a year, which is not bad, it's not bad. but that's now an hour in the car. Uh, that's an hour in the car on the highway at 80 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> and yes, we have 80 mile an hour speed <laughs> limits for those of you who don't know. I know Texas has them too. Oh, we have um, 70, I think we have 70. You have 70? Uh, okay. Yeah. So we finally beat, well, we beat you guys on, on permitless carry and, and, and uh, speed limits speed apparently. Limit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for those of you guys that are in, uh, in cities that you, you're stuck at 55, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's an hour at 80 miles an hour to get there. Um, so there's an hour there, hour back, uh, setting up, you know, moving steel around. I mean, you're, you're, you're at, in trip and, and just setting up, you're sitting somewhere around three hours and you haven't squeezed a trigger, yeah. right? Then you have your trigger time. So there's maybe another hour. There's right. four hours, half your day right there just to go shooting. And that's why I, that's why I like tri fires. You know, I'm here in the studio. I have my targets on the wall there and I yeah. can, you mm -hmm. know, move around. I'll put a, a, like this mic, I'll put it in my way to force me to go around something. Um, you know, yep. I'll put the studio lights in my way. So that way I can set up and make a realistic, you know, shooting situation at home and not spend 40 cents a round. <laughs> to right, do right. It. I mean, because because if you think I've th I've read uh, you know Mike Oxner's book or Mike Ox's book, I've read other people talk about how much dry fire should you actually have in your repertoire, right? I mean, so let's say I have a hunt a round of uh, a box of hundred rounds of ammo, nine mil. I mean, if you think about it, I've heard numbers as high as eighty to ninety percent of your actual repertoire should be dry fire. So if you took eighty of those bullets out there, or let's say you added eighty more rounds to that box for that same price. That's kind of what you're doing with dry fire because now you're perfecting or working on those objectives or skills that you, you know, we said, we said, that's what you do when dry fire, you've actually essentially added virtual ammo there to work out the trigger press, the sight picture, the issues that you have. And then when you go and load that magazine up, that 30 round mag that you're talking about, you're getting real value out of each shot. It's not where, oh man, that was a flyer out there. I could have fixed that with yep. dry fire. And that's the big thing. And the point that you made there. The one big differentiator between laser and a lot of the other products on the market is we have um, we have laser X and you've probably heard us talk about dynamic dry fire. And the yep. dynamic portion of it is 
you're not standing still anymore because a lot of uh, dry fire is, you know, snapping in, pulling a trigger, maybe racking your slide and standing still like you would at a 25 yard shooting bay. With Laser X, we have the ability to connect or network multiple devices. So let's say everyone on your team has an iPhone or anyone, everyone in your family has an iPhone, it seems like it. You actually, with those licenses, you have the ability to network them together and put targets in different parts of your house so you can practice movement in your house. Or when I was talking to one of these uh, big national organizations, you know, when you think about defense, and I see these comments on a lot of Instagram pages of people who don't like guns or anti-guns, they say, oh, does that mean that uh, all these people with constitutional carry or people are carrying, when something goes wrong, everybody whips out their gun and shoots in that same direction? I said, no, the whole idea about EDC or uh, concealed carry is it's defense. The first goal is yeah. to get out of danger. The goal is not to do engage to, you know, move to contact and engage. That's what we do in the military and the Marine Corps. The idea is to, hey, that gun is there. If you have the last resort, you're trapped in the room, you can't flee. You're going to leave because the highest percentage to survive is to flee and get out of danger. It's not to engage yes. in a gunfight. And I think that's what a lot of the people who hate guns miss the fact that people who carry have a different mindset. Our goal is to get to safety, get everyone else and our family to safety. It's not to go and engage the first thought. Yeah. It's to get out. And then if, heaven forbid, we have to fight, that's when the gun comes out. That's really what happens there. Yeah. And that's the thing is that's that's a that's a, a it. If we have to draw, that's our last choice, right? Correct. We're, we're, yes. We got our back against the wall. We're in a corner. We cannot get anywhere. That's the last choice. I don't want to draw my firearm. Right. Um, I just want to get away. You know, everybody's going, you know, I'm going to protect myself, my family. The best way to protect us is to not be where the place the bullets are flying. Right. 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 Um, and you know, even like for me, when I went to go get my concealed carry permit, I was fortunate enough to go through a class that was taught by a former highway patrol, um, mm -hmm. officer yeah. here in Montana. And, you know, and he, he reinforced that because you want to get out. You don't, you don't want to stick around. This is, this is not a party. You, you want to get out. You want to get out of the way and, um, you know, not only just that is if for some reason you do have to shoot, yeah. you know, Montana is a pretty easy state to deal with. You know, as long as it's a good shoot, it's a defensive shoot, you're fine. You still have civil liability that's coming your way. Sure. Sure. Um, I mean, even, you know, even in Texas, I mean, when people think, Oh, a gun friendly state, Texas, we don't go around. We're not trying to do, uh, shoot out of the okay corral. Uh, the last thing you want to do is get uh, lead poisoning or draw a gun and have to take someone's life. But again, I think that's, sometimes I think it's the message that's gone out there. We haven't, we haven't pressed that message enough to say, hey, this gun is for defensive carry. Now, if I'm in the military or law enforcement, different story. But when I'm traveling or when I'm with my family in a restaurant, we're always looking, where's the closest exit? Maybe it's through the kitchen. And that's something, you know, I learned from uh, listening to these other courses is, the goal is to get to safety. It's not to go engage a target and get into danger. And that's the highest percentage yeah. of survivability is to do that. So, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's the idea. So, so in Laser X, you know, we we're talking about dyna dynamic movement. You can actually set up targets throughout your house. And in fact, an example, um, Jason, is when I first joined the company or when I first purchased the company and I got brave enough to pick up the customer service phone and <laughs> answer some of the questions, um, it was a church was calling. And they were saying, hey, we got ushers and deacons who want to practice. But the challenge is when they practice in the uh, in a gun range with a 25 yard shooting bay, it has no relevance or semblance to yeah. the area they'll be protecting on Sundays. It doesn't look like the worship center, it doesn't look like the foyer or the, you know, or the mother's room. Yeah. How do we do that? And with that networking capability of laser X, you can actually set up silhouettes, targets, whatever you want, set up the uh, camera or your device to look at those and your team can actually get the feel of moving throughout the environment. So for example, the schools, when there some law enforcement agencies use simunition, you have to tarp off the area, clean up afterwards. Here, yep. you, yeah, you're not shooting simunition, but you're actually able to set up targets in the different classrooms and practice a dynamic entry and get the feel of it before, let's say, you engage with simunition or, heaven forbid, a real-life situation. You can get that practice in there, and you're practicing in the actual environment you're training in. It's not a video. It's not a imagine this or pretend you're shooting a 25-yard bay. It's just a different feel altogether. Well, and we talked a little bit mm -hmm. offline, uh, and I'll bring the question up now. Sure. Is 
with your solution, you're you're not locked into a particular thing. I mean, yes, we talked about uh, dry fire, but if I already have, well, I got one right here. If I already have a laser cartridge, yeah, I'm good mm. to go. Absolutely. You know, I don't have to buy a specific laser cartridge if I have. You know, we talked. Yeah, you know, this is what we talked about offline. Something like a cool fire, where yeah. it's cycling. You know, it's using compressed gas to slide to, to cycle my slide. Um, I don't have to go buy special gear. I whatever I have. You know, if I have, um, I have a, a Mantis Blackbeard for my AR, yep. so it'll reset the thing. Everything I've got, I can use with your solution. So, a absolutely, you know, I can. Absolutely. I can set that scenario up. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the people. one of the biggest questions we got, Jason, um, and uh, from folks at the NRA show is, what do we need to train with? Well, if you have the firearm, like you said, with that laser cartridge, you've got the basic premise of what you need. Your firearm, again, you can rack the slide, practice shooting at a paint chip on the wall. Now you up the training with a laser cartridge so you can see where the shot would have gone. Um, yep. Some people want to up it. I mean, the last live stream we did, I think it was yesterday, we did a live stream showing the different types of hardware we actually encountered at shot and uh, not shot show at the dinner convention. And we went from the laser cartridge to uh, an LTP, a laser training pistol that uh, a new manufacturer is coming out with to a dry fire mag made by dry fire mag. It's their smart mag that you can use your Glock. In. And then we have the certs. The certs are kind of like the one that the military police, you see that around, it's the red and black pistol. And those are things you can use, but you can train at any single level you want. You just don't have to go all in because, granted, ammo is expensive, uh, gas is expensive to get to the range, and some of the tools you would train with could be prohibitively expensive, like a cool fire. But we, yep. you know, we have two versions of the software. One supports recoil training; the other one does some of the dynamic movement. So we try to really uh, open up the world for people who want to train and instructors who want to teach their students as well. And and that's kind of uh, you know we'll go back to the the five million and with your dynamic training. You know, sure. we have these new gun owners that, okay, let's just say they did go to the range, right? You know, they start, they, they spend a couple hundred rounds. Uh, they're still not masters of that firearm, right. but at least they have a little bit more uh, responsibility or not responsible, a little more practice with it. They're not, I mean, look, not everybody's a tactical person, right? Right. You know, I bought this gun for defense. Okay. Well, defending your home is not, punching holes into paper at 25 yards or yeah. <laughs> 10 yards. If you really start off, right. That's true. Um, that's true. Uh, so that's where I, that's what I like about your dynamic training is, you know, okay. You woke, you're woken up in the middle of the night, you reach over, you open up your gun safe in your drawer, you draw your gun um, and you can have the scenario, right. Yeah. You know, okay. Something happened and I need to get to the kids. Right. right go down the hallway and then you can, you can deal with what if somebody's at the end of the hallway or, or you turn a corner and someone's there and then you're getting out and then, there's, you know, you're, you're coming back out and then there's somebody, you know, at the bottom of the stairs. Right. Those are the right. scenarios that you can set up with, with your solution. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what's nice about that. So I was watching a YouTube uh, video, I think field craft survival. They were talking about doing some of the dynamic movement with, with uh, carbines or ARs yep. and that idea of coming in. It's one thing when you're in a law enforcement situation where you're having to sweep or clear some of the rooms, there's different cases when you're hearing your loved one or you hear a sound in the house and you want to make sure, Hey, it's not your daughter or she's in the bedroom. You can, uh, what's nice about it is you can run those exact scenarios that you're talking about and everyone can participate because you're not at risk of discharging a live, uh, live round. If you're yep. using, let's say a cert or training pistol, you can do that over and over and over so that it becomes rote and everybody knows what's expected of them or where they should go in a case like that in the house. And again, a lot of people say, well, then are you moving to engagement again? No. Part of the practice is how would we do this if someone was in the kitchen and we need to go out through the back door? You can run those scenarios because the idea is how to get out there and avoid contact. But if you had to take the shot, you know, what would that be like based on you coming well, down the hallway or down the stairs? It's, it's interesting. That's the way you could actually set it up. Yeah, I mean, just because you know someone's in the kitchen, you're trying to avoid the kitchen, doesn't mean there's not somebody outside the house too, right? Correct. I mean, correct. Leaving, mm -hmm. you know, we we want to be defensive, right? We want to we want to get away from the bullets flying. We don't want to discharge that firearm, but in the process of getting out of the way, yeah. we may we may get engaged. Um, have to, right. And that's the those are the scenarios, and I don't think. 
and that's that's the thing I think most gun owners, even you know, seasoned gun owners, they don't think about those type of scenarios. You know, I'm not a tactical person. I do I, I did not grow up as a tactical person, but I have to understand that you know how my house flows, where I'm right. at, and if for some reason I need to get out, how do I get out, and where where could be my choke points of getting out? You know, just because I think someone's in the kitchen doesn't mean they're in the kitchen. What if it's you know it's an echo that I'm hearing? Right. Or let's you know, say you have I would, the, the multiple partners or multiple people in your house. I mean, you okay. might hear the, the guy made a rustling in the kitchen, but there's actually someone uh, just outside your daughter's bedroom or your bedroom. That's that's the challenge yeah. you run into. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. I remember in the 80s when we were growing up, uh, maybe even before 70s, because uh, I'm a kid of the 70s, um, we did, you practice fire drills in your home. You know, you had a place to go to. Where's yeah. your escape? And let's say you, had, you got separated from my family. Where do you go meet? Is there like a, a tree in the neighborhood that you go rally up uh, if you get separated? It's the same kind of thing just because, you know, now we've added the dimension of we have cases where people are breaking in. Uh, a lot of more farms owners uh, want to protect themselves. Those are things you should, you should practice. It's not just the fire drill in your house, but also how would it be now that you have to deal with a firearm or someone breaking in your house? How would you deal with that? And I think it's similar to that if you think about what we were doing in the 70s and 80s and stuff. It's funny you brought up fire drills because where we're talking, that was what went through my mind. I remember yeah. doing that as a kid. <laughs> um, I don't even think they teach that anymore. Um, no, I, I, no, I don't. There's not an app for it either, right? You can't. No, do an app there's, there's definitely not an app it. for it. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know, you know, because I remember, I remember as a kid, all that was being taught to us in school. How yeah. do you get out? I mean, it. We were. They were taking us so far as not only you know dial nine one one, but do you know the number of your local firehouse? Exactly. We didn't have nine one one at the time. Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah, like, you have to know the fire. You have the police department, the uh, hospital, or the emergency, and then the fire department. You have the numbers right yeah. there by the phone. We, yeah. we get we got quizzed on what the phone number was to the firehouse because yeah, yeah, you get into this certain places. Don't the nine one one wasn't there. They didn't yeah. have this all connect interconnected network that they have now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's 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 funny you bring that because it's bringing back a lot of memories. I remember, <laughs> I remember it's like, do you know, do you know where? Because you know, if you have a store, two story house, do you know where the fire ladder is? Yeah, right? exactly. You know, the, the, yeah. The, the thing you you put on the window and you can climb down. <laughs> right. Or uh, hopefully you weren't using it to go out and play hooky at night or go go take off with your friends. But no, that's yeah. those are the type of things I remember. Maybe we're dating ourselves on the podcast or saying, oh, these guys are a bunch of old blokes. But no, those are the things you ran into. <laughs> I think some of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, someone took me to task saying, hey, so does that mean, you know, it's scary the kids have to practice, you know, uh, a lot, uh, was it uh, shooter drills at school? I said, well, why not? I've heard Dan Bongino talk about it. When's the last time we actually lost a mass casualty of lives uh, due to a fire drill or due to a fire in a school? Not because they're well practiced. This is something we have to deal with. And I think it makes common sense to say whether at home or at school, it's something that's part, uh, part of the dynamic that we're doing. And the idea is to keep you safe. And I don't know anybody who should be against safety. That's the big thing. It's really about safety. <clears throat> really? I mean, if you think about it now, it, it's just a modern day version of duck and cover. Yeah. I remember I remember those drills. You remember I, that? Yeah. I, was, I was at the tail end of those things. Yeah. Yeah. So was I. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was at the very tail of it. But yeah, I, it, I mean, that's what it is. It's it's I mean, we ran we ran those things in school. It's just yeah. the way it was. That was life. Um, it's sad. But. Maybe you know, that's why you, we're messed up because we did duck and cover drills. Yeah, and we had iodine yeah. in the uh, iodine tablets in the uh, in the yep. drug cabinet in the house. <laughs> well, it's funny because um, when I lived on the East Coast, I lived um, there was a there was a I don't want to say a fire whistle. It was a an emergency alert because I was near a nuclear power plant. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we every two years we got brand new iodine. <laughs> <laughs> just, in, just in case, and, you know, and it's so funny because you, 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 yeah, I remember thinking that going half my neighbors don't understand what this thing is for. Mm. Um, but anyway, practice. Um, that's the greatest thing about about practice is yeah. that you can set mm -hmm. up those scenarios with your solution. You can do that. Um, now you have two different versions of your mm -hmm. app. Let me bring up your web page here real quick. Okay. Um, talk to me a little bit about the different versions here. Yeah, so if you go under solutions under that menu, it shows Laser X and Laser Classic. And we usually go to the compare if you did that. But 
it what it does is laser classic was the very first one in fact i believe it's been around it depends who you talk to 2013 2014. um that was the one it runs on windows and we still have it today it's not sunset uh because i know a lot of people say what's the uh uh migration path it's not a migration path because we support laser classic it's still loved by our company and loved by a lot of our customers um it's the biggest difference is you need to have it run in a windows environment um some people will run it off of a mac using you know boot camp or vmware or parallels you can do that so it runs it's got to have that windows environment and the other thing about it is it's the one thing it's the one camera based version of any software out there that will support uh, recoil simulation lasers like the cool fire you mentioned and the reason being is it's installed it's resident on the computer it's an ac actual application that's resident in your uh, in your computer and the recoil lasers um, i don't have one on me they they have such a short burst duration uh, almost down to six to eight milliseconds sometimes faster that a web-based application really has trouble picking that up. It's intermittent. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Uh, your mileage will vary. But the Laser Classic version, if you pair it with our uh, Laser Classic Advanced Camera, you can do recoil simulation training with those cool fire types of devices. And it's really because of the laser or the speed of the burst or the pulse of that laser that, that makes it the limitation. Yeah, because with, with a, I mean, the, I know the two of us. Two of us are are geeks, right? We're IT, we're IT, we're guys, IT guys, right? right? <laughs> uh, and and that's the whole thing is you know you're talking about six milliseconds. People, I know the people in the audience don't know what six milliseconds is. It's very short. You know, it's yeah. it, it's a fraction of a second. And to you know, if we when you visit a website, you just pull it up in a web browser. Depending on your provider, that could be. 40 or 50 milliseconds just by the time you hit go to the time that that's received and, and the transmission is back. Right. So now that's why a web-based version would be really tough because you're talking about something that's so short right. going through something that's still short, but you know, there, there's just too much of a gap there. Right. And, and that's, that's the big, um, that, that is really the biggest differentiator between laser classic and laser X, because again, laser X, it runs on, we say, uh, what it has to be on a web browser it's accessed via web browser so you need to have internet connection and a webcam and again smart devices all fit that bill your laptop your surface your ipad they'll fit the bill so you can run laser x on more devices than you would normally with laser classic the added difference in laser x is it has the networking feature whereas laser classic doesn't have because it's not internet based it doesn't know about other cameras on your WAN or on your, I won't right. say that, on your uh, Wi-Fi network, put it that way. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're really great applications and we try to keep it, again, keep it affordable because the last thing you want to do is make us, have us become the obstacle between you and your training. Um, and we have, so we have versions of uh, monthly subscriptions, uh, annual subscriptions, and we just brought back the, uh, like a lifetime license or lifetime, yeah, lifetime license for Laser X because a lot of folks were getting tired or we've heard the term subscription fatigue, you know, Netflix, yeah. Hulu, I got everything. I lose track of it. So we brought back the lifetime subscription or lifetime, excuse me, license for laser classic or laser X and laser classic has always been a lifetime, uh, uh, lifetime license for that. Now, one thing I noticed, uh, you know, I was going through the website a little bit earlier today <clears throat> and um, you know, you're talking about these licensing, you mm -hmm. can, one of the things, you know, we're talking about, you know, personally using this. One of the scenarios that you brought up on your licensing is, is gun clubs, right? Yeah. So, or, and, and one of the things I thought of is, you know, I used to be an FFL. It would have been really cool having something like this in a store, right? Right. So, hey, I, I'd like to try this out. You know, this is not just a personal thing. You can, this solution has, well, your solution has multiple solutions. <laughs> you, can, you can solve problems both for training and for, hey, if you're trying to sell a gun, because I, I know a couple of FFLs that do listen to the podcast. Um, given that, you know, you might be able to give customers a chance to, hey, how does this thing really shoot? Right. I mean, uh, short of having that gun and, you know, there's so many different types of guns out there that you would always have one in your rental cabinet uh, that you can say, okay, go take this version of, Let's say a, 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 a old German P228, the one the Secret Service used to use. Go take that out, see if you like it. You found it here. 
go take it out into the uh, gun range and try it out. You might not have that version on your in your uh, rental locker, but I could see, and maybe it's safe, because you usually ask people, can I dry fire this or can I pull the trigger here yeah. at the cabin when you're trying it out? If you had a laser cartridge, if your customer wanted to see how that gun felt or how it shot, you could put a laser cartridge in there. They can rack it and try the slide. And it's no different than them dry firing. At least now they give, have a little better objective or goal of what they're trying to accomplish. But um, to your point, clubs, I mean, we have, uh, so for example, Scholastic Action Shooting. It's one of the posters we had at the NRA, NRA convention, and you may have seen that. Um, getting youth exposed to firearms the right way and in a healthy manner of competition, maybe even self-defense, That's it's a great way for people to get exposure. And also I've heard instructors say, I want to gauge the readiness of when some of these students are approaching us uh, for training to see if they're ready to go out on the live range so they can have them try it with a short pistol or something like that, where there's no risk of actually sending lead down range or through a wall. Yep. They can actually try it out and gauge whether that uh, that student or that potential consumer or customer is ready to actually go out there on the live range or not. It's a, it's a way to, I've heard people use it to vet uh, whether the, red, the, the student is ready to go out there. It's a, Think about it this way. It's a graduation. We're going to graduate yeah, they, from dry fire to live fire. Right? There you go. Yeah. It's your, it, it's, so for students, it would be their midterm exam. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would. Or they would get a deficiency <laughs> report and say, you got to come back and do it again. Um, yeah. One thing, I want, one, one thing I want to ask you, because I know you're in the, uh, a lot of the media space in the 2A community. I noticed, and I was talking to some of these larger organizations, a lot of the training we get today is, uh, let's say, eight-hour brain dump. It might be you might spend $1,000 over a weekend. You go there Saturday and Sunday. You go home, and hopefully you retain a lot of that. You can apply it. Sure, you can go home and dry fire that. But what we're hoping to see is maybe more of a music and musical instrument type of training or maybe MMA type of training where the coaches or the instructors don't just say, come to my clinic one time and bye-bye, I'll never see again. It'd be nice to have a more lo longitudinal type of training where, hey, I want to work on this technique that I'm running into. Um, how do I do it? And you maybe come back to the instructor every week, maybe for a session, and they tell you, you know what, here's the exercise to fix that issue. Go home, exercise that on laser app or, or, or doing dry fire and come back next week and let's see if there's been some improvement. Because I've seen a lot of the training classes and I'm, you know, I, in the military, same way. Uh, they do a one class, it's a brain dump, and hopefully you retain a lot of that. And sometimes it just falls on the ground or, you know, uh, it just never gets absorbed to begin with. Whereas longitudinal classroom training, you can come back and refine that. And if you missed it, the instructor will tell you again, this is how you do it. And here's some more drills, how to correct that. That's just something that's just something I did notice in the space today. You know, it, it's one thing I was thinking about. Um, I'm trying to remember if he does it. Um, God, I can't remember what his name is now. Um, it's because we're a product of the 70s. I, I, it, well, yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny. Is any other time I could, I could spit his name off. He shoots for six <laughs> hour. Um, used to be in the Army. Um, well, anyways, um, it's, it totally kills me because I, 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 I follow his career. Um, but anyways, he, I know he does some, some training online, but what, if you think about it, if, if, if an instructor is so inclined yeah. with a dry fire thing, cause like with your product, you can record the shots. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think I'd like to go ahead. Oh, no. I, I think you have, it sounds like you have Laser Classic. Is that the version that you have or that you've been exposed Actually, I, to? I, I, I'm gonna, I've only done the 30-day trial of your product. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Well, I mean, with but, Laser Classic, I mean, th there is, both of them, you can actually send your results to your uh, to an instructor. So Laser X, we just released a plug-in where you can send in your times, your shooting times and your scores, um, because some law enforcement agencies have said, hey, we need some type of compliance or auditing. So can you give us a way to get export the record besides a screenshot? We have that in Laser X. Laser Classic has always had that as one of their modules, um, but they have a thing called Shooter Watch. So besides the webcam looking at your targets on the wall, you can attach, you purchase the module or the plugin, you can have a second webcam looking at you or your hand or your stance so that you can go to your instructor and say, here's what I'm, here's what's happening on my target. Here's how I'm, uh, you know, my stance, here's my grip. Can you help me fix this? And where I heard that come in handy is during a lot of the virus lockdowns that we had, a lot of folks up north said, we're not even on the range. We can't even get together. How do we engage our students? Well, we did it with your, uh, you know, shooter watch application on Laser Classic. 
So it opens up other training tools. And that's what we really consider ourselves to be is we're not the trainer. We're the ones who give the trainers the tools to instruct their students and make it easier. And that's one of the things they did using Laser Classic and the Shooter Watch plugin. Well, what I was thinking of mm -hmm. is um, it was uh, Mac Michelle. I just remembered his name. Um, because I know he has to train with Max. I don't know if it's online, but it would be really cool if we got some of these uh, some of these instructors that, okay, maybe I don't want to drive, you know, let's face it, there's not a lot of training in Montana. Um, I'd have to go, you know, drive to another state to do some of these, uh, to get to a, a really, you know, high level training class. What would be cool is if we get like instructors that would use something like that, where it's like, hey, every here's your homework for the week, right? Yep. Work on this drill. Mm -hmm. have, you know, send me your scores, send me your videos. And then we're going to have like, you know, a 30 minute session. We can do it over yeah. Zoom or whatever meeting, you know, platform. We can go over that. We I can show you, you can, you know, try it. And then we're going to meet again in another week. There It'd be kind of cool if we could get into like a continuous cycle like that, where um, you can almost, it's almost like, you know, um, you know, or, you know, you're in IT, you know, software as a service. It'd be yes. firearms training as a service. It, it would be. And I think it, it shouldn't be a strange uh, stranger to a lot of us because I, besides being an IT geek, I was a band geek. And I, I remember going to my lessons. I would be told to practice these scales. Here's what you do. Practice these exercises. And I'd have a piece of music I need to work on. Come back next week and my, my music teacher would see whether or not I actually practiced. The results would bear, you know, would be there for her to see or he to see. When, uh, when I played the music or the, the sheet of music that they gave to me. So uh, hopefully it's a way for instructors also to add uh, more to their business model because a lot of our a lot of our customers are instructors. And if it's just that buy once, cry once thing where you spent uh, $1,000 to do a weekend with, you know, with Ben, um, a lot of it didn't stick. But maybe as an instructor, if you have locals or, for example, we we're talking about folks in these areas where they can't easily ask for training, if you had folks like that, you can reach out to them, serve that underserved community of yeah. farms owners and actually bring them up to speed. So now we're actually helping the Second Amendment community become healthier and better trained. And you've also improved your business model as an option to say, hey, it's not just a once and done. I actually have recurring revenue or recurring students coming back every week, like like a martial arts teacher would do or like a music teacher yeah. would do. And that, that's yeah, I love that idea because, I mean, Let's face it, we're becoming the Amazon uh, society, right? We yeah. we don't want to leave the house anymore, uh, yeah. especially after being locked in them for two years. <laughs> <laughs> you find out I didn't really like you after all. I don't want to go see you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I kind of like not talking to other people. <laughs> other people are just idiots. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but that that would be really you know kind of nice because I mean, you think about everything else with internal. I mean, it we're 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 asking. In, in you know what we've been talking about, we're asking the industry to do what's already happened. I mean, Peloton yeah. has done it, right? Um, there I mean, there's in the in the fitness and workout area, everybody went online. Um, why why can't we do the same thing with firearms training and then yeah. do it from the comfort of your home? No one knows you're doing it. You know, I mean, some people. One of the things I see because I've I've taken a lot of people to the range for their first time. A lot of people are worried about looking stupid, right? Yes. yes. I mean, well, I, I'm there to keep you from looking stupid. I'm there to keep you from, you know, from doing something stupid. I'm there to keep you safe. Yeah. Um, well, firearms training at home with an instructor, you don't have to worry about that when you do. Because let's face it, there's no, there's no alternative to live fire, right? Yeah. No matter absolutely. how much dry fire you do, it's not the same as live fire, but like you said in the beginning, you work on those skills so that when you when you do expend the ammunition, you're more efficient at doing it. Yeah, and I think it'd be great if somebody out there would just come up with that that model. I mean, even then, you know, even if you're a, let's well, say a prime instructor, even when you go to these classes, they have other ROs that are there helping people work through problems. Right. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. need the prime instructor the whole time, right? You know, you can right. have different, you know, different levels of instructors helping you out. Hey, I'm having a problem with this. Okay, well, that's a lower level function. You know, it it, it could be a thing. I could see how someone would come up with a, 
thing with that. And if they do, I get credit for it. Ben gets credit for it, and you owe us money. <laughs> and the Second Amendment can even becomes happier altogether and healthier. Now, I mean, exactly. You, you, your point there is well taken because, I mean, again, as much as we like dry fire, it's the business model that I have and the company that I uh, have is it never is intended to replace live fire. You made that point. I think you make that point clear. If anything, live fire proves your practice. Yep. Uh, just like when you go to a concert and you're going, it's time to play. Can you play that sheet of music? Everybody will know right in front of their eyes whether you practice or not because you stumble through the scales or you stumble through that sheet of music or the band just didn't perform. It, there's no replacement for live fire, just like there's no replacement. You practice in music to perform. In this case, I mean, you have a perfect example of uh, RSOs, the senior guys and the assistants that are out there. We have, uh, so I've talked to law enforcement departments who do it. And they say, Ben, one of the challenges is when we go qual and one of our students or student, not students, one of our officers doesn't pass qualification, you know, they might have a chance to reshoot it. But if they don't pass it, even there, now they've got to go remedial training. They can't go out in the field because they can't carry a firearm. And when they go back to practice or go qualify, we've got to take another officer off the line, spend time with them to go recall them. And it it, it, um, it takes a lot of resource drain on us. Yeah, you take two resources. Whereas if we had laser there or we have a dry fire uh, set up like, like this, we can actually take the officer aside, have them run through a couple exercises to see if they can get the idea how to fix that issue, then go back on the line and try to recall, recall that same day, as opposed to possibly prolonging this to a couple of days, couple of weeks, and then it just become, it just snowballs and now you're draining resources. You can still address it while you're there. And I've heard some, de- I won't say which departments, but I've heard some departments actually handle it that way. They actually take them aside, say, okay, let's unload your weapon, put in a locker. Let's have you do a couple of presses here and see if we can get you back on the line. Let's get you called again today. So, I mean, I, I, your example there works really well. I'm going to bring this up off your website because we were talking about this. And this is one thing that kind of stood mm-hmm. out is the courses. Ah. Yeah. And like you have these different courses and this is, um, you know, course, New York, uh, New York State qualification for armed security guards. Yep. Um, there's just so a lot, lot of these courses that you see there, these are, um, I'll say, almost beta, uh, beta tests that we did because Again, these are some of the departments either we saw, we were able to find some of the qualifications they had online. For example, New York Department of Corrections uh, Justice System, I think that's what it is, in uh, New York State Department of Corrections uh, Justice Qualification. They had their uh, their qualification there, and this is for armed security guards. They had the uh, requirements there. So we were able to get their target and uh, kind of do the mock-up of what that course of fire is. So if you clicked on there, I mean, if I click on there, I'm, I'm actually able to get in. We have the target template set up in laser that once you log in, if you have a laser X license, you can go in there and practice it so that when you go for the qualification, the live fire portion of it, you are familiar with it and you get the feel of it. Um, same way with scholastic action shooting. Um, we have their poster that you saw there. They have certain determined strings of fire that they have to run through. Uh, the students can practice it over and over. We've scaled the maps and the targets correctly. So I'm in a 10 by 10 uh, home office here. But if I hang that target on the wall, it'll be scaled to the exact size. If I stand back a certain amount of feet, let's say five feet, it'll be scaled to the exact size of if I need to be shooting it at 15 yards or 10 yards or whatever. So the size of your room is no longer an issue. The hardware and the time should no longer be an issue. But those are different things we did either experiments with to say, how, how would this work out for that training session? Because we can see their qualifications online. And that's, that's what you were seeing there on the course of the fire. Yeah. It- and this is kind of where I was going with that is that, you know, you're talking about the law enforcement officers. If they have a, uh, a course that you need to qualify on, yep. you can build it, just, yep. bu- just build it in the system yep. and, and go after it. And, you know, that way, if you're talking about, I mean, you know, every state has their law, their own law enforcement Academy, right? Yep. So if you're going to send officers through it, why can't they practice their qualifications before they even go to the Academy? Yep. Um, you know, that way when, when they're standing there, I mean, I can hear, uh, it's, it's odd because our, our law enforcement Academy is, uh, where they go shooting is actually next to the airport. Oh, <laughs> kind of, kind of, that's also where they do their, uh, their, their winter driving testing. Cause they have one of those cars oh. on the dollies. <laughs> um, and, and also our, our emergency management system where they teach you how to put out 
uh, fires on aircraft is on next, right next to the airport. It's always always fun when people are landing in Helena and they see a, an airplane Big on fire smoke. off the sky. <laughs> welcome to the air. Welcome. <laughs> We're going to well, try to land well, this one. Oh, no, we're putting a fire out over there on yeah. an aircraft. Um, but that's, that's the whole thing. We practice for everything. Why not continue to practice stuff like this? It's affordable. Um, it, you know, it, it you can reinforce your skills. You know, like we talked earlier, it's, it's a perishable skill. Continue yeah. to work it. If you're worried about running a firearm, when you put one of these into your barrel, you can't introduce ammunition into that barrel. Right. <laughs> this is take. This is plugged your barrel at that point. Right. Until uh, you pop this thing out. So, I mean, definitely make sure that you have ammunition out of the area. But if for some reason you pick up the wrong mag, which you should know by field, <laughs> by field, because <laughs> um, it's going to be heavier. But if for some reason you do, this this becomes your safety point at that point because you can't introduce that round into the firearm. Yeah, I, mean, um, I think I think to what you're saying there also is just the sheer cost of it. Um, in a lot of these shows, we overhear conversations, people talk about ammunition. Ammunition, I think when I, in fact, I did a quick calculation I was mentioning earlier, um, nine mil ammo, let's say you're not using the range stuff, you're using 124 grain bullets. So, you know, competitors might use that for practice. Um, I know hollow points are a lot more expensive, so defensive rounds. But if you're thinking, uh, I went to Ammo Seek and I did a quick look, 150, uh, one round of uh, nine mil is roughly 25 cents a round right now. That's if you're buying it in bulk in thousands. So right. if someone said, hey, Ben, what's this thing really worth? Because they asked me, you know, they asked those questions when we were at the conventions. So assume you go to the range for an hour, and I would think maybe someone will uh, go through 150 rounds in just one hour. And that's like, that's all you did. You're probably looking at $40 in ammo. Then you add in, I don't know, $20 in, in range fee. Maybe it's less, maybe it's a little more. So you're looking almost what uh, you're looking at probably at a case of you're looking almost at $40 plus another $20. So you're looking at $60 at that point. Now, if you go once a week, and that's assuming you go once a week, maybe some people used to go twice or three times a week. Um, you can imagine that. So you're doing 60 times 52 already. And that's that, that's what the cost is just to shoot. And if dry fire is 80% of that, you're essentially extending your ability to train and extending what's in your wallet. So that's just a quick way to look at it. And again, you're practicing with range ammo or competition ammo. You're not practicing with home fence ammo. So the price of your pressure ammunition is going to go up. And with all a lot of the shortages, I think I saw that some of uh, one of the main uh, Lake City, I think uh, one of the manufacturers is not going to be able to sell or probably won't be selling uh, some of the surplus ammo too, which it goes into the civilian market about 30% yep. of the ammo supply that could get impacted along with what is, we just had the ban of Russian ammo. Um, yep. It's going to be a lot tougher. So you want to be cost conscious. And I think this is a way to do it so that one, you're still able to train and get, get those reps in, but actually you're training the way you're supposed to train to begin with by using dry fire. It's just a way of going back to the goal, old tried and true way of doing things. There's, there's also one mm. cost that we didn't account for and it's not a lot, but cleaning. Oh, you have to clean your gun. Yes. <laughs> oh, hopefully, right? Hopefully, you're cleaning your hopefully. gun. Yeah, because uh, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, I was like, you know, while we were talking about this, I'm like, oh yeah, it, it just dawned on me that I went, I shot four different guns yesterday. I still have to clean them, but when I dry fire them, I don't have to clean those guns. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen those memes where here's your here's your shotgun looking at you cleaning cleaning your everyday carry one. It's all covered with soot. Uh, yeah, exactly. Some people, um, I, I may, I guess maybe me being a jarhead, uh, I come back from the range, I clean that sucker out every time. And that's one of the things that kept me from firing a lot is I touch it, I'm gonna have to clean it. Uh, so I try not to, you know, try not to go overboard and have all these guns laying around that I've shot, because you do want to clean it and maintain it. But that is an expense. I mean, patches cost money. Um, you know, see, I use CLP still, but uh, you have ultrasonic cleaner, all this other stuff, it does, it, it, it adds up um, to, to what you're doing when you come to your training. And, and and if you grew up like I did, and I'm sure you're going to know, if I mention the word hoppies, do you smell it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Just by the mention we, of the name, do you smell it? Absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. You, I don't know if you it's might a good I smelled it, but I know what it smells yeah. like. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, when you clean your house, you, your family may can, or you clean the gun, you may, your family may complain about the smell in the house afterwards. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think those are the those are the days when we used to spray Lysol in the house too. So yeah, I, exactly. Well, true. Yeah. yeah. It's the same yeah. thing. So I said, I don't know. I, I know the smell clearly. I just don't know it was yeah. a good thing that I know the smell. <laughs> yeah, like Lysol was was our version of Febreze back then. <laughs> that's that's right. <laughs> if it didn't stink, it wasn't working, I think. In some that's case. right. <laughs> <laughs> so well, Ben, we've been going about an hour now. Oh, okay. Uh, well, where can people reach the reach laser at? Well, for, for laser, you can catch us on our website. So we're predominantly, uh, we use the term SaaS, uh, software as a service. We're predominantly on the net, on the internet. You can catch us at laserapp.com. That's L-A-S-R-A-P-P.com. And that'll take them to the website you have there. Um, and what we can do is, uh, you know, I'll throw this out to you, Jason. I, and I'm always careful about this because I don't want to um, say something that you didn't get to vet first. But if you'd like for your listeners or the viewers on the Rogue Banshee podcast, Let's set up a, a, a promotion code so that they'll get ten percent off if they cash in on that. Use that code, and you'll also it'll help out your show as well. So we can do that where we set up a code. Just let me know what that is, and we'll get it set up so that viewers and listeners of the podcast they put in that code that you're, uh, we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll give us. We'll make that the discount code, and they'll get their ten percent off and whatever they. How about we just say it right now? How about T R B ten one zero T R B one zero. TR so say it again. It's TRB. Okay. So it'd be the rogue page. TRB one zero. Okay. We'll do that after the show. I'll set that uh, uh, promo code up in there. TRB one zero, and I'll give you some of the details on the back end. Um, but we'll definitely uh, as soon as we're done here, and by the time this airs, they'll have that discount code running for you. Yeah, that that's great. I definitely yeah. want to make sure everybody can uh, can get that in there because that's oh hey look. Money's a thing right now. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it won't be, Jason. It won't just be on the software. It'll be anything on the store. That's typically what we do with those discount awesome. codes. So if they see the laser cartridge that you were showing them there, uh, cert pistols, we'll uh, anything that's in the store that we carry, we typically give the ten percent discount off of there. And and those for uh, those of you out there that don't know what a cert pistol is, it is basically a pistol modeled after yeah. a gun. Sometimes they're Glocks, um, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and they're plastic, so that way yeah. you know that it's a training gun. It's mm-hmm. actually not going to fire. And there you go. Ben's got one right there. Right they're very well known by their red slide and red trigger. <laughs> and, um, and we, you know, we still treat it like a real farm, even in the office here. Um, you have two models. This is the, well, actually there's different models of them. You can get them, I think, as a Sig like. You can get an MNP like or a Glock like pistol, and they actually come with either a polymer slide which is uh, more like a student model. It's four ounce lighter than this other one. This is modeled after a Glock 17 and it weighs the exact amount or weight of an actual Glock, fully loaded magazine. Uh, that, uh, and this is what they train with. And I, I'll do this just for demonstrative purposes uh, because you know we want to treat it like a real gun. It has the laser that shoots out there. So that's why when you pull the trigger, you don't have to rack the slide that you would do normally with a uh, laser cartridge. But that's that's the advantage of having a cert pistol. Like you said, people recognize it and they say, "Oh, okay, that's a training device." Yep, and those are those are great uh, great guns. They have uh, they even have a bolt for an AR-15, so you can yep. replace your bolt carrier. So you can use an AR-15. Great training aids. Um, definitely think about that if you if you don't want to use a actual firearm. Definitely those cert pistols are a great choice to do. And I I do like that they have them so they're weighted just like your regular gun. So that that's an awesome. Thanks for bringing that out because some people just don't know what a cert pistol is. Yeah. And they're uh they're a great alternative. It's it's funny when people approach us and say, uh, do you work with cert? Cert's the name of the product, the actual name of the company's next level training. Uh Mike and Britt, great guys there. Um, but I think they're the name of the product sometimes overrides the name of their company. But when they, when people talk about cert, uh, next level training makes a next bunch of training. Ones. Yeah. They make a bunch yep. of different ones like that. <laughs> so let's see here before we go, I want to sure. run through a quick speed round with you. Oh, uh Oh, here we go. Uh, I didn't prep for this so, one. There... Yeah. You don't know the questions are going to answer. No, I just put, <laughs> I on the, on the notes scary. I sent you, I just said speed round. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> so, so, so I think I know the answer to the first one. Okay. But rifle or pistol? I really like rifle. I was raised in the Marine Corps that way. Um, I like that's, distance shooting. That's, 
Yeah. That's why I thought it was going to be rifle, <laughs> just because of, of Marine Corps. Yeah, every Marine's a rifleman. It's a it's a Zen sitting behind uh, <laughs> sitting behind your rifle, watching the uh, you know five hundred yard shot and hitting it. It there's something about it. I mean, no, n nothing against pistols, but I like the Zen from sitting behind a rifle. It just feels differently. Yeah. So in rifle, two two three or three oh eight. Wow. Um, I was raised on a 5.56, you know, M16A2. I do have an uh, M, what is it, uh, M1A in my closet that I bought before lockdown. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to shoot it. Um, I would love, I think I would love the 308 or the 762 round, but I don't have much time behind the trigger on one of those. So I know what I can do with a 556. So I'll say 556. Okay. So on pistols, okay. nine millimeter or forty-five? Ooh, I love the forty-five. Uh, the first gun I had is a forty-five, nineteen eleven. Uh, my sister told me you're going to give that up because it's too heavy. <laughs> it doesn't have the ammo. <laughs> so I switched to a Walther forty-five. But I have more nines than anything else. But I still love the forty-five. There's just mm, there's just there's something, something about, about it when it goes off. Yeah, it's it's like the forty five, you know, forty five ACP is just about as American as you can get. I mean, yeah. that's like that's like it's, it's like classic like three fifty seven. You know, there you go. I mean, I think it's like a muscle <laughs> car. You know, it's a muscle car. Yeah, exactly. To work on, and you know what it's going to do when you let it go. So, in a rifle, okay, bolt action or semi automatic. Ooh, bolt action. Even though the I have a six five Creedmoor. I like the bolt. Yeah, I like yeah. My I, six five Creedmoor. Uh, that's that's on my bucket list. Yeah, of, uh, <laughs> of guns. Um, and and bolt action. Uh, I know I can. I know I can build a semi, but I really want that thing in a bolt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. And let's see here. Shotgun. Okay. Pump action or break action. I I only have pumps. Uh, I have a vanilla M4. I haven't had to shoot had a chance to shoot. Um, I'll say pump action at this point because that's the only um, only thing I've actually worked with at this point. So that's good. It's kind of funny. You have an M4. I have an M2. Oh, um, nice. But I I grew up and I still have it on an 870. <laughs> Oh, dude. <laughs> still have it there you go Ever since i mean those are tried and true that's the thing those are workhorses right yeah 10 years old i i got an 870 when you did what's what did that you shoot more? what did you shoot more your m2 or the uh, 870 nowadays <laughs> nowadays my m2 um okay. <laughs> but, but i get i get guilty uh, because also sitting, <laughs> also sitting in the safe uh, is my father's uh, Browning uh, A5. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, I'm familiar with that platform there. Yeah, the Browning Auto 5. It's, um, wow. it's an amazing shotgun. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, 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 these days the Benelli gets more time because that was going to be my three gun gun. Oh, um, there you go. That makes but, sense. That makes sense. But that is the one thing with three guns you can do um, what's called heavy metal. So instead of shooting your five five sixes, you shoot your uh, seven six two, but wow. not your three oh eights. But your shotgun has to be a pump action. <laughs> oh, is that okay? So that's the thing. They'll let you adjust it. You got a pump action. Yeah. Let, so if you go into heavy metal, your shotgun's a pump action. Okay. Um, so my my <laughs> eight seventy was going to get repurposed for uh, for three gun on that. But, uh, and then <laughs> final, final question. Okay. Out of every gun that has ever existed in the world. Okay. If you could have one, which one would you want? Wow. Every gun. It can be rifle or a pistol, right? Rifle, pistol, whatever. If, if it has existed, what gun would you want? What gun would I want? Ooh. I think I'd go with the Thompson. Thompson. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, yeah. It's a 45. A, um, <laughs> 45, semi-auto. It's an American um, gun. I just, it, it just, it's an it American just gun. All around. I, I got to shoot uh, 
one time I was working with a with a police force and I got some range time with them and they still had a couple of full auto Tommy guns. Oh wow. And uh so, so I was learning with their MP5s. I was shooting their 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 suppressed MP5s. And that was, I was like, that was fun. I was having a great time. And then they go, uh, so the, the sergeant I was with, he goes, do you want to have fun? I'm like, what have we been doing? He goes, oh, yeah, that's civilian fun. He goes, do you want to have fun? And I'm like, what? And he goes, we have full auto Tommy guns still, just a couple of them. I'm like, oh. Um, <laughs> Was it the awesome stick mag guy. or do you have a drum mag on that puppy? Yeah, I, I like because that's the first thing. Is, drum mag is no, it's just law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> we have drum mags in law enforcement. It was a stick mag. There you um, go. No. But that was man, that was that was such that was such a dream come true. And that that gun, um, just the thumping of it. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like you know, kind of like shooting a shooting a Tommy gun versus you know an AR or the M16, yeah. any of the, any of the semi-auto. Um, five five sixes it's kind of like the difference between shooting you know an m16 and a ma deuce right i mean there yeah i I could yeah i could could, could, you got a different percussion to it it's just got a different you know it's slower (laughs) you know he's it it's awesome it's slow because i've shot the ma deuce i've shot the 60 m60 um i've shot the the saw and then of course ar and a lot of the other guns said there's just something about you know, there's a big difference between the Ma Deuce and the M60 is a beautiful gun. I love the way it felt. I mean, it talks to you when you're shooting it as well. Um, but uh, yeah, just just those classic type of guns like the Thompson, the 45 ACP, there's just a different feel to it. You can get a nice souped up modern day car or just a large block V8. It, it, yeah, a different it, feel. They're not better. Nice it's just 70s different. muscle car. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's got the growl and everything to it and the exhaust. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just and nothing it's simple like it. as anything it's, to work on, right? You don't have a bunch of yeah. ohmmeters and stuff like that. It's just one of those things. It's just, it's a classic, right? Yeah. And that's definitely a classic. <laughs> well, that, Would I drive far with it? So. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want no, to. Well, <laughs> I don't know. You're going to have to come up with something like that. I, I, yeah. <laughs> a bolt drive fire a Mod Deuce <laughs> with a <Yeah>. laser app. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You'd have to have a belt fed laser cartridges so it, oh yeah we'll just have to string some of those nine millimeter car or 45 yeah, so the, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then figure out an electric motor to keep the belt moving <laughs> there you go i'll have to talk to drive fire gun mag about that to see you got a belt fed version of that thing <laughs> yeah you had a belt fed of the 50 gal for... <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, i'm i'm pretty sure they would give you a really puzzling look yeah i'm sure john would say look we just came out with the, the glock version now you're asking for a, mod, a belt fed version <laughs> No, but that's so, Ben, it's been great having you on. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to join me here. And well, definitely, yeah. everybody, go to Laser App and L A S R A P P dot com, and use the code TRB ten to get ten percent off. Ben, thank you so much for the discount code. Well, appreciate you having us on, and uh, appreciate what you're doing to help support and grow the Second Amendment community. We need to do that. It's, it's our God-given right, so hopefully everybody will be responsible and practice as well. I had a really good time talking to Ben. We talked for about a half hour before we started recording. Uh, we realized we were burning through time and we just needed to get started. We probably could have talked for at least another hour. And Ben and I have talked on the phone a couple of times trying to get things set up. And, and I really enjoy talking to him. He's a great guy. And... This product that he's coming out with is cool. The one thing I really like about it, and you heard in the podcast, is that, you know, with the Laser X, you can start getting multiple cameras. So you can start setting up almost like your own shoot house in your home. You know, after we stopped recording, Ben was talking about, you know, you can use any target. Anything can be a target with with their, their app. And he is you know, like the pegboard behind me, he goes, you can pick tools out on the pegboard. That's a target. You can define it as a target. So it's really cool that you can use well, just about anything you want to use as a target. So definitely go check out laserapp.com. It's L-A-S-R-A-P-P.com. And don't forget to use the code TRB10 to save 10% on your order. And 
trust me, you're going to really like these products. I've played around with them. I've done the trial versions of it. I plan on getting the full versions of it and really start working with it and bringing additional content. Thanks for joining me. Hope you're staying safe out there and I look forward to talking to you again soon.